next on Hawaii News Now. A 20-year murder mystery. I failed to protect my son. The lies finally coming to an end. Are you pleading guilty of your own free will? Yes, Your Honor. We now know what happened to the six-year-old Hilo boy before and after death. And the thing that they tried to do with him, trying to cremate him. And we now know where's Peter Boy from his father's own reluctant confession. Some of his responses were simply motioning and pointing. But why did it take so long to get answers? This wasn't an easy case. Tonight, the people inside the investigation and the deals made to get the convictions. And I initially mixed the deal. The family members who never gave up. It still hurts. And who else is still being blamed? Learn a lesson on this. Do not let this happen again. A Hawaii News Now special report inside the search for Peter Bohr. It was one of Hawaii's most notorious unsolved crimes, the 1997 disappearance of six-year-old Peter Boy Kema. Over the years, while his parents lied, the community cried out. The bumper sticker, So Where's Peter, was both question and accusation, a demand for answers not just from the parents, but from the government institutions that were supposed to protect him. Soon the case will finally be put to rest with convictions and prison for his parents. But many say the Kemas are getting off easy, considering all that the boy and his loved ones went through. An adorable smile even though Peter Boy Kema suffered for much of his short life, even from the day he was born, May Day, 1991. He had to be flown from Hilo to Honolulu with heart and lung problems and was hospitalized for almost three weeks before going home to the Big Island with his parents, Peter Kema Sr. and Jalen Kema. The couple were already suspected of abusing his half-brother and sister, Chantel and Alan Akol, Jalen's children from before she married. Just three months later, state Child Protective Services records show Jalen brought Peter Boy to the hospital with a swollen knee, and she said he had been acting fussy. But x-rays revealed Peter Boy actually had multiple fractures to his arms, legs, and ribs. The doctor reported the appearance and distribution of these fractures as characteristic of child abuse. CPS took all three children and put them with their grandparents, Jimmy and Yolanda Akol, in Kona. They thrive there. These home videos were all taken during those happy years. His famous words, Papa, you need a beer today? <laughs> when I get you over? You need a beer today, Papa? He would okay. always say that. Okay, I'll go get him. In 1993, the Kemas had another child, Lena Akol. While the Kemas were getting CPS counseling and parenting training, she was also placed with grandma and grandpa. The four children were very close. I remember playing, pretending like we're Power Rangers, running around in the park. A favorite swimming spot of theirs, Old A's, the beach at the old Kona airport. This is video of them in the water with their grandmother. Life was good. But it was all about to end. After three years, despite the history of abuse and warnings from social workers and family members, CPS returned the children to Peter and Jalen Kemma. The beatings resumed. While all the children were forced to endure abuse, one child got the worst of it, Peter Boy. Returning him to the Kemmas was a death sentence. Parents are the ones that are supposed to love you. Not treat you like a dog. It was a house of horrors for the Kemma children. The Nanavale estate's home was where they were subjected to brutal beatings by their parents, Peter Boy especially. I mean, he was always covered up from head to toe with like a jacket, pants. I mean, you could never see any of the bruises. Bruises and broken bones were the physical injuries. 
but torture came in many forms. Putting me in a trash bag and letting me eat feces and everything else. Forced to eat feces, Peter Boy was also chained to the bed overnight, and when the family went out in public, he was stuffed into the trunk of the family car. Our dad said that he would he was punished, he was being punished for doing something bad. We'd go to the beach and he'd be in the trunk. We'd go to the store, he'd be in the trunk. The abuse would eventually kill him, but his death was slow and painful, the result of a wound on his arm that festered and became gangrenous. Instead of taking him to the doctor, his parents locked him in a room. The wound smelled of rotting flesh and was therefore called the stink room. The Kamas would punish the siblings by making them go into the stink room with Peter Boy, who was sometimes called Pepe. At his mother's court hearing, Big Island Deputy Prosecutor Ricky Roy Damerville detailed the fatal injury, choking up as he described it. A forensic pathologist will testify that given the descriptions of Pepe's injuries, Pepe died as a result of septic shock and, and as a result of the parents not timely obtaining medical care for Pepe. Peter Boy died in the summer of 1997, and still, the Kamas refused to call for help, instead burning and then disposing of the six-year-old's body themselves. Months later, they reported him missing. Coming up, the community rallies to try and find Peter Boy, while his parents put on a show for the cameras. I would like the public to know that we're trying to look for my son. And it's very hard for us because we can't find him. No one believed them. So why did it take so long to finally prove they killed Peter Boy? Peter Boy's brother and two sisters last saw him alive in June of 1997. Six months later, his parents finally filed a missing persons report. That launched a statewide search, which only they knew would lead to nothing but years of frustration. He never saw any injuries. A community on the hunt, holding out hope that six-year-old Peter Boy Kemma could someday be found alive and return to his grandparents and siblings. One day, you'll, you'll call and say, hi, Pop, or hi, Mom, here I am. Bumper stickers were plastered on vehicles all over Hilo. Signs and flyers were handed out. Well, the last place I had left them was in Oahu. In 1998, his parents made a bizarre and unconvincing plea for help, but it was clear they were the only suspects. Did you hurt or kill your son? I know I did not. Hounded for answers and publicly vilified as child abusers, they stuck together, making up a story that sent Big Island police to Oahu, to Aala Park, where the Kema said they left Peter Boy with a relative, Auntie Rose Makuakane. The other children were taken from the Kemas for good, and the rest of the family shut them out. They know where he is. Definitely. They know where he is. But they stuck to their story, staying quiet for almost 20 years. The bumper stickers faded over time, and Peter Boy's disappearance became one of Hawaii's most notorious unsolved mysteries. In 2005, thousands of pages of documents from Child Protective Services were released, detailing the extent of the abuse the children were subjected to and highlighting the failures of the state to protect them. And one year later, computer images were released showing what Peter Boy would have looked like as a teenager. At that time, his siblings, 
teenagers themselves now began to speak out, hoping continued attention could spark new leads. While the media revisited the story periodically over the next decade, his family, especially his grandparents, thought about him every day. Just be patient. Just be patient. But how long? Yolanda Akol died in 2008 without the answers she waited so long for. My wife said before she passed, don't give up. The family didn't give up. And in 2012, a new prosecutor was elected to Hawaii County. Mitch Roth made a campaign promise to chip away at unsolved murder cases. Peter Boy was by far the best known of those mysteries. It was never a question of who killed Peter Boy. His parents were always the only suspects. And despite well-documented child abuse and multiple accusations by their other children, Peter and Jalen Kemma weren't charged with the murder of the six-year-old for 19 years. I'm very excited about it. I mean, I think uh, it's been a long time. In November of 2014, Hawaii County Prosecuting Attorney Mitch Roth announced that investigators were reopening the case, but it would not be easy. There was still no body and no eyewitness. But Peter Boy's older brother, Alan Akol, was hopeful. I want something to be done about it. That's all I'm asking. Even for them to try? Try. Just try. One year later, in November of 2015, the Kamas were arrested for welfare fraud and gun charges, unrelated to the murder, but a chance for law enforcement to get them apart and show them life inside a jail. The welfare fraud was a really nice little addition there and having her uh, in custody and splitting them up, um, I think that made it a big difference to the end result. The separation was not only an opportunity for law enforcement to try to get Jalen Kemma to turn against her husband, it was also an opportunity for their youngest daughter, Lena Akol, to also make her mom an emotional offer. You could do so much better. You know, I, have, I have a son that, you know, maybe one day wants to know what his grandma is like. Lena started communicating with her mother, even bringing her son, Luke, to secretly meet his grandmother. But she was always hesitant to let Jalen get too close. She refused to let her hold him and kept the meetings brief. <laughs> While awaiting trial for welfare fraud, Jalen bailed out of jail and disappointed her family and law enforcement by going back to her husband. But their reunion would be short-lived. The arrests, although for minor charges, put the Kemas back in the spotlight. After all those years, they now knew they were being watched again. Then, on April 28, 2016, we watched as Peter Kemma Sr. was handcuffed outside his Gila workplace, the result of a grand jury indictment. But a delay in the court paperwork forced Hawaii County Police to improvise, taking him in for traffic violations. Jalen Kemma was called to the location to pick up the couple's car. About an hour later, the murder indictments were finalized. Jalen, what happened to your son? Jalen, will you tell police what happened to your son? That was the last day the Kemmas were together. The indictment was the easy part. That's just an accusation. Getting a conviction for murder Proving the case beyond a reasonable doubt after 20 years and with no body would be a huge challenge. It was also risky. Prosecutors had to charge murder because time had run out for any other possible charge, including manslaughter. If they lost a trial, the Kemas would have escaped justice forever. The prosecution had one shot, but they also had a strategy. Where is Peter Boy, Jalen? The pressure was on. Charged with murder, Jalen Kemma, who had lost her foot to diabetes, spent just weeks in a jail cell before agreeing to cooperate with investigators. Sources say during lie detector tests, she admitted Peter Boy died from an infected wound on his arm that she allowed to fester for months. She told police that her husband 
then burned their son's body. But she said she didn't know what he did with the remains. The results of the lie detector tests were inconclusive, but it opened the door to her testifying against her husband. For the first time, she was willing to make a deal. On December 1st, 2016, I failed to protect my son. And your son is who? Peter Kemma Jr. And what you did recklessly caused his death? Yes. It was a huge turning point in the decades-old case. What is your plea, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Jalen Kemma pleaded guilty to manslaughter instead of murder. She would be required to serve only one year in jail. That came with criticism for prosecuting attorney Mitch Roth. It was hard. It was hard. I, I you know, believe we could have got the conviction, but I also realize it was a, you know, a, a, a gamble. But with Jalen Kemma finally ending 20 years of silence and willing to testify against her husband, the odds were now in his favor. That plea deal changed everything. Peter was now alone in his silence. Prosecutors let that settle through the Christmas holiday. Then with the new year came a new attitude towards a deal. But this one wouldn't be so easy. What would it take to get a man who claimed he was innocent for 20 years to finally admit guilt? I failed to protect my son. His wife turning against him. Knowing Jalen Kemma was going to take the stand at his upcoming murder trial, Peter Kemma was ready to make a deal of his own. This case was personal to all of us. But prosecuting attorney Mitch Roth wasn't quite ready to negotiate. Dropping the charge from murder to manslaughter, as he did with Jalen, would take the life sentence off the table. Roth said he grappled with it for days. A big factor, what the family wanted more than anything, were answers about six-year-old Peter Boy's death. Answers Peter Sr. would likely keep to himself if he went to trial. And if we went to trial, we, we probably would have never known. Even if we got the conviction, we would have probably never known and never had that answer, never had that closure. Roth says a Hawaii News Now interview from 2014 with Peter Boy's grandfather, Jimmy Akol, weighed on his mind. The interview with Jimmy and, the, you know, the, when, he talked, when he talked to his wife on her, on her deathbed. My wife said before she passed, don't give up. Roth decided to make the deal. And on April 5th, Peter Kemma went to court to finally admit he killed Peter Boy. Are you pretty guilty of your own free will? Yes, Your Honor. Kemma tried to hide behind his attorney throughout the hearing, and he never once turned to look at his family in the gallery, not even his own daughter, who he hadn't seen since she was four years old. It was very hard. Um, I guess I had a lot of anger, um, a lot of sadness, knowing that I guess this could be the time where he's actually telling the truth. Are you pleading guilty? Because after discussing all of the evidence and receiving advice of law from your lawyer, you believe that you are guilty? Yes, I am. The deal dropped the maximum sentence to 20 years, but there was a condition. Kemma had to tell the secrets he had held since 1997 details of the torture his son endured, what finally killed the boy, and most importantly, how he disposed of the remains. About three weeks later, Peter Kama was put in the back of a police car and guided law enforcement to this remote location along the Puna Coast, south of Mackenzie State Park. It was here that he told them he threw a cardboard box with Peter Boy's remains into the ocean. Some of his responses were simply motioning and pointing where to go. Days later, the family went there too. I was like, oh, I recognize that place and that place. Oh yeah, we went the other way on this place. The drive out along the Puna coast felt familiar for older brother Alan Nicole, but when they stopped along the lava road, 
The family was deeply disappointed. It was not a place they had visited before. As they watched the ocean waves crash against the jagged rocks, they knew they were never going to be able to bring Peter Boy home. Decades of hurricanes and high tides washed away any evidence of his remains. His father took a lie detector test to prove that he was telling the truth, that that spot is Peter Boy's final resting place. Coming up, there is one more being blamed for his death. Nobody listened, you know. How much I tried to call for help and nobody turned. The ignored cries for help by the state's Child Protective Services Division and how the family plans to deal with it 20 years later. many who say Peter Boy's death could have been avoided, that he was not just the victim of abusive parents, but of a social services safety net that failed him. That's why legal battles will continue now that the criminal case is over. The question remains, should the State Department of Human Services, specifically Child Protective Services, also be held accountable? The cries for help were loud and clear, but ignored. Let the state be learn our lesson on this. Do not let this happen again. Peter Boy Kema's grandfather says it was agonizing, knowing the six-year-old was in danger and no one would intervene. How I wonder what you are. Peter Boy and his siblings were happiest with Jimmy and Yolanda Okol in Kona when these videos were taken. But in 1994, Child Protective Services returned Peter Boy and then the rest of the children to their parents, despite clear warnings from psychologists, social workers, even other foster parents, including Arena Cheesebro, who wrote to the agency in 1994 after hearing the Kemas were getting their kids back. Cheesebro didn't hold back, saying, I'm here to tell you it's wrong. This is where I say your system sucks. The two-page letter ends, I just felt I had to say something on Peter Jr.'s behalf because someday he is going to find out what happened and he's going to wonder why no one helped him. Cheesebro has since died, but in a 2007 interview described her reaction when Peter Boy's grandma called to say he was missing. And I screamed and screamed and I said, I told you folks, I told you folks. Other letters from social workers express concerns about the efforts by the Kemas to isolate the children from contact with their grandparents and that the Kemas suddenly changed their telephone number without telling anyone. The grandfather recalls in 1996, months before Peter Boy died, that he saw the child at a funeral in Kona. Peter Boy had bruises on his face and a large bandage on on his arm. When Jimmy Akol confronted his daughter, Jalen Kemma claimed it was just a cut and that a doctor examined it. Both lies. It was the wound that would eventually kill him. The grandfather went to the Kona CBS office that day, but the social worker there refused to help, telling him it wasn't his jurisdiction because the Kemas lived in Hilo. In my way of thinking, there is no such thing as it's not my jurisdiction. It is. No matter where you are, when somebody calls for help, that was the worst thing. Nobody listened. Earlier this year, a court ordered report by Special Master Stephen Lane found what he calls substantial evidence supporting a lawsuit by Peter Boy's three siblings against the state of Hawaii DHS. They hired attorney Randall Rosenberg. We should be angry and we should not accept this kind of outcome. We pay for this. It's very painful to imagine that a child had been subjected to this kind of behavior over a prolonged period of time. 
there's no damages that could make this right, frankly. We're just going to do the best we can uh, to get something for the survivors so that they can get closure. Statute of limitations for a wrongful death civil suit is two years, but because Peter Boy was not confirmed dead until recently, Rosenberg says that clock didn't start ticking until Jalen Kemma confessed to killing him in court in December of last year. DHS declined to comment on the special master's report or the expected civil suit, but they did say they have made changes to their policy since Peter Boy's death to better protect Hawaii's keiki. One of those changes could have directly affected the Kema children. They spent about 36 months with their loving grandparents before being reunited with Peter and Jalen Kema. If the child is in placement for 15 out of the last 22 months, um, we move towards termination of parental rights. So termination would have already been in the works. CPS admits reunification is still a priority, but will abandon that goal when a child is in danger. They also require face-to-face -face monthly contact between social workers and the children. When we come back, Jalen Kemma has already served her time for Peter Boy's death. Now that she is out, is reconciliation possible? Do you think you could ever forgive her? And now that we know Peter Boy is dead, the family is planning a memorial service. But will it be at the site in Puna or in Kona, where loved ones say he was the happiest? I have caused my children to live in a nightmare, and I have denied them the healthy childhood, and I'm so very sorry. A tearful apology 20 years later. At her June 13th court hearing, Jalen Kemmel broke down. It was this emotional confession that kept her out of jail longer. I know I deserve the punishment of imprisonment. For far too long, I kept the secret of the abuse of my children especially Peter Boy. But is this apology 20 years later, 20 years too late? There was no doubt Lena Akol would never forgive her father, Peter Kemma Sr. But there was a time when she thought she could reconcile with her mother, Jalen, even let her be a grandmother to son Luke, who Jalen met in a secret meeting after her arrest for welfare fraud. But that's all changed now. I know I said that, you know, maybe it could happen that she would be a part of Luke's life. But after learning more, I don't want no, I don't want that near him at all. I don't want I don't want nothing to do with her. Brother Alan Acole feels the same way. Yeah, I'm still good at not talking to her though. Um, right now, I'm, I got so far in my life without her. Even Jalen Kemma's own father, Jimmy Akol. Us forgiving her is going to be hard, very hard. Jalen in court, admitting that she didn't seek help for Peter Boy as he was slowly dying of an infection and then helping her husband cover up the crime, ensured that the family will maintain the distance they kept for 20 years. Parents are the ones that are supposed to love you. not treat you like a dog. Lena Akol was born with a Kema as her last name, but she later changed it, severing all ties to the couple. Grandparents Jimmy and Yolanda Akol raised her after Peter Boy disappeared, and she refers to them as her parents. So as far as I know, my dad's sitting right next to me, and my mom is buried in Hololo Cemetery. You'll never forgive them? I'll never forgive them. Oldest sister Chantelle Acole now lives in Florida with a six-year-old son of her own. She says closure means they can find comfort in their faith that Peter Boy, who she always affectionately called Pepe, is with his grandma again. 
at least we get closure in knowing that you know Pepe is never going to come home again but he's been in heaven and I know that Pepe greeted her in heaven and that's you know I that to me makes me smile that makes me know that that's He's okay. The family says Jalen's one year in jail and Peter serving less than life are not nearly enough. But the plea deals were worth it to see their grandfather finally fulfill his promise to his dying wife. Yeah, I know Yolanda is happy now and she's in a different place with him. And they're looking at me and say, Papa, he did good. Solving the Peter Boy mystery has clearly not washed away the grief over his death, the resentment toward his parents, or the belief that others should be held accountable. But his family is moving forward. They will finally hold a memorial service for him in Kona. It's something they discussed before, but that small bit of hope that Peter Boy might still be alive kept them from accepting the terrible truth. Now that they know, however painful, they are ready to say goodbye. Pastor, I love you. I love you. My dear. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.